Welcome everyone! This video is going to be part one on how to draw a realistic looking dog in pastel pencils. Welcome to my channel. My name is Julieta and I'm a portrait artist and if you've been here before, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, Welcome and I hope you enjoy this video as well as other videos where I teach you trips, <laughs> tips and tricks on how to draw realistic looking portraits of humans as well as dogs. So this video is going to be part one of a two part video where I teach you how to draw a realistic looking dog, in this case a chihuahua mix, using pastel pencils. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. Our life is concerned today. I had already done a layer of like very light yellow um, kind of like a canary yellow, I don't know how you would explain it, just as a base. And now I'm doing um, charcoal gray. And as you can see, first thing I did was just lay the color always in the same direction. By that I mean, I'll show you again, I don't do this and then I go this way. I always follow the same direction. If I'm going to go, let's say, northwest, I keep going northwest. No pun intended with uh, Kim Kardashian's kid. I did not mean it that way, but you know what I mean. Um, all right, so something like this. Next step. We're going to take a Q-tip. Again, as I said before, uh, a few seconds ago, I'm a frugal artist. I am a lot into sticking to one's budget and just putting the work and your energy and actually doing the work and getting the experience and then everything will fall into place. So you can use items, a lot of items that are already at your house that you don't have to go and buy them at a specialty art stores. But some things you do have to invest on if you want a good quality um, um, artwork as a, as a result. So I put this layer, right? Uh, and next thing we're going to do, we're going to go with a new color that I have it somewhere around here and I apologize because sometimes I just move around too much. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it over there. Sorry guys. Um, all right, here we have the other ones. Now that we have that already done, this is already a difference between what we had when we first started. I am going to go with black, black um, pastel. As you can see, I'm not pressing too hard on the, on the pencil, I mean, on the paper. This is very, very light because what we're doing here, what's our goal? Our goal is to use the paper as a palette where we're going to mix these colors. Not, you, it, you know, you would think that you can only mix if we're talking about acrylics or oils, you know, any wet medium, but you can also do it with pastels. That's why it's such an interesting medium and material. You can do all sorts of things. And then we're going to go over here. I'm basing myself on the reference picture and this is the um, darkest part of the year. I would have to guess that it's probably because of a, a couple of reasons. One of them being is the deepest part of the year and that's why it's going to be darker and also because of the, the fur itself. We also have a few darker little areas over here. So what do we do? We just used as you can see, we just uh, use the Q-tip, but Q-tips are for broader areas, as long as we're talking about also small areas. Right now, we are going to use something else. We will use a tortillion. This is extremely affordable. These are like basically like um, absorbent papers that are rolled up into a little like cigarette-like tube. What type of paper am I using? Great question, Jen. Um, I'm using um, Strathmore tan paper. It's uh, one of my favorite papers. It's um, really good quality, very smooth to work in, to work on. And I like to use the tan variety, not the white variety, because it automatically helps um, as a base of a neutral color where you can put a lot of things, including white, and that will make it pop. Because the problem is if you use just a white paper and you want to apply whites, they're going, kind of going to disappear. You know, they're, it's not going to help with the 3D effect. So Strathmore is a beautiful, wonderful brand. You see what I'm doing here with, um, with the tortillion? I am also smoking out and blending all these um, traces of pencil, but it's a lot smaller and a lot more specific than, um, than the Q-tip. Q-tip is for a broader area, like for the whole triangle uh, that constitutes the ear. In this case, it's just for little spaces. I really want to finish this year for you today, guys, because I want you to see how it's going to end up. It's, it's important. 
Otherwise, it's just like I do little bits here and there, but you can't really see um, the final, the final um, product. Okay, so overall, so far, the colors I have worked with are um, cool colors, like neutral values or colors. Now we're going to start to get a little warmer. I'm going to use um, brown. And then I'm going to use a, choose a, a choice of a pencil that is going to maybe surprise you, but you will see why. Like, because we're now we're where we're basically doing, we're just mixing. Mix, 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 mix. And it's good to have always a balance of like cool and warm colors, especially if you're working with organic things, with things that have a life that, you know, that have a, <laughs> things that have a heartbeat, you know, like living beings, because we are warm blooded. We humans, dogs, cats, any animal. Okay, I want you to see this. What is this? This is purple, right? Interesting, why would I use purple? I just want you to see what it does. The moment that we mix it with gray. Isn't it beautiful? It's not necessarily um, brown, but it's something along the lines of earthy, you know, like, it's something that you actually have to do as you go. You have to experiment. If you feel, if you feel insecure and you're not sure if, oh no, I don't know if I want to do it on the pen, on you know the paper itself, on the work artwork itself. Well, you know, get another piece of paper that you can just practice on, and that's where you do your color testing. That's always a great option. That's something I would actually recommend you to do. Okay. I'm just going to give this a little bit more depth and then we're going to start giving it the fun part. We're going to start doing the fun part, which is making it look real. Just a couple more touches of dark. Son of hell, welcome. Great to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. And then Marcel, great to have you guys. Always great to have you. Tell me what you're doing, what kind of artwork you're working on at the moment. You can always share them. And if you send them to me, I will tag you. And, you know, I, I just love all that stuff, you know, like supporting each other, learning from each other. So, you know, just let me know. And in the meantime, while I'm doing this, just the last touches of dark, I also wanted to tell you, if you haven't seen it yet in my feed, I am about to come out, come out with, um, with my first art course where I'm going to teach you all that are interested in how to do a portrait and you're a very, very new beginner or you're intermediate, you have some experience, whatever the case may be, I will teach you everything you need to know to learn how to start doing portraits and how to do it. So I'm very excited about it. And it should come out in about um, maybe two weeks or something like that. Okay, now that we have this done, can we see the difference? This is like dark. La Bohème, Ali, great to see you. How do you know what to layer first? Cool versus warm, great question. What I lay first is the most neutral and predominant color. Let's take this as an example, right? The whole dog. You would look at this dog with the naked eye, whether you're an artist or not, and you're like, yeah, this is like a yellowish slash light brown um, dog, right? So you pick that up, you see that with your artistic eye, and that's what I do first. I do a whole layer. You can, you can, you know, you can go back to my early tutorials of this dog, and that's what you're going to see. I just did a whole layer where I mixed um, pastel sticks. One is yellow, the other one is kind of like earthy tan color. And then I used the tissue and I went like that. I just did a whole uh, uniform layer of the same tone. That's what I started to work on. Once that's done, that's when I start developing the specific colors. And I hope that helps because that's a, that's a very, very good question. You know, when people are not sure, you know, like all that stuff, that's usually what you do. And sorry, I'm right now, I'm like looking for a color that I, oh no, no, I haven't lost it. <laughs> sorry about that. I haven't lost it. I am actually going to, these are the darker ones, the bases. I'm just gonna put them here. And now we're going to move on to the lighter ones. Okay, what are we doing here? We are using two different types of yellow. We're using, uh, this one is called ivory, according to the Carbocello, and this one is called, I don't know, I think canary yellow, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. This is where the magic is gonna start happening, guys, so bear with me here. Okay, now it's, we're gonna start doing the details. Something like this. Can we see that? Now it's, it's gonna stop being flat. Now this is gonna start taking some shape. 
My friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you were able to learn something. And if you have any comments, any requests or any questions, please leave them down below and consider subscribing to this channel if you like this video and any tips that you may have are going to help me improve as an artist as well as um, sharing with you whatever it is that you find useful in order for you to become an amazing artist. So thank you very, very much for watching and don't forget to check out my website to grab your free tutorial on how to draw a realistic looking face. So thank you very much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye bye now.